Hey y'all, good morning. Welcome to my channel, Dougie Shaven. Good to see you. It's another rainy day here in Austin, Texas, sprinkling outside. Hopefully I'll be able to hit some balls later. We'll see. It's supposed to maybe dry up, but we'll see if that happens. So today I am going to be featuring, starting off with a little True Fit in Hill pre-shave oil. Now this is a very luxurious pre-shave oil. It's my favorite by far. Does not feel like oil when you're putting it on your face and it has a nice little orange scent to it and it really hydrates and gets the face ready for the shave to come. And then I'm going to be going PAA Sangri de Greco. I hope I'm saying that right guys. I don't know. If I'm saying it wrong let me know. Comment below. And then we're going to be using, out of Eros, Louisiana, Sawdust Creation Studios. Look at the work on this. It is absolutely gorgeous. You can never have too big of a brush. And we're going to be finishing up, of course, with the matching balm. And the matching splash. So I don't know if you guys use, sometimes I use balm and splash at the same time. Sometimes I don't. Feels like whatever I want to do. Do you use the balm first and then the splash or the splash first and then the balm? Comment below. Let me know if you do. So let's get this shave started, shall we? It's... I've already had a really nice warm shower. Face is nice and wet. And we're going to apply a little bit of this pre-shave oil on there. Really great scent. Nice orange kind of tangerine thing. And it's not like the other oils that I have, where you feel like you've got a big coat of vegetable oil on your face, you know. It's really nice and luxurious. Okay. Got my Captain's Choice Bowl already lathered up. And this PAA offering here, absolutely gorgeous peaks on it. It has kind of a, a dark tint to it. In the actual lather itself, which I think is kind of neat. Very nice sandalwood and OUD smell. Ode. Get my painting on. Pull in a little Bob Ross. We got some happy leather here. Happy leather. Today I am using my Parker 24C. I really liked it because of the long handle. This thing is incredible. I got these bass playing hands. I've been played bass for 30 years. And I like a long handle. I got a feather blade in it, and we're going to start with the grain. Got to hit some balls yesterday, and it rained on me. Greens were super slow. I love PAA there. They've got such a unique blend. of oh, great fragrances. And their soap is just high quality. Little bit goes a long way here, folks. What you gotta love. It's nice to see things coming back to normal here in Austin. Although I don't like the traffic. It is absolutely horrible. It is worse than when I was living in Virginia Beach and I had to deal with that bridge tunnel all the time. My brother lives eight miles from me. 
and to get over to his house for dinner, it takes me 45 minutes to get there. Oh man, look at this stuff. It's like whipped cream. I want to put it in my coffee. Super nice brush by Robert at Sawdust Creation Studios. And he does some really nice work on bowls and stuff. After he made this one for me, I was like, you know what? I want a bowl that matches it. Can you do that? And he's like, yes, I can. Be interested to see how that turns out. Cross the grain here. And so I guess the mask mandate uh, is still in a place, but I see a lot of people out there not wearing them. Um, I'm fully vaccinated, so. I still wear the mask just because that's what I do. Cross the grain up here. People are starting to get back out on 6th Street again. When I first moved here, I would go down there, but now, if I don't have to go downtown, I don't go downtown. There's just too many people out there. I like my nice quiet area out here in Cedar Park, Texas. I noticed that they've got the uh, Austin City Limits is going to happen again this year. They've already announced all of the artists that are performing. <laughs> I'm getting so old. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> I remember thinking, you know, when I would sit with my father and we would listen to music together. My, my father is a guitar player. And, uh, you know, he was the first one to turn me on. He, you know, sat me down. I really want you to listen to this music. It's something that's important to me and I want you to hear it, you know, because I can see you're a musician. And, and so we sat down and we listened to my first Eagles album and I was just blown away. I was like, that is a band, you know? And so I'm like, dad, you know, I have something I'd like you to sit down and listen to. And he's like, okay. And uh, I put on ACDC Back in Black and Van Halen 1 and 2. And, you know, my dad he's got an open mind, you know. And so he's like, all right, cool. Against the grain here. My grandfather was a musician as well. And he played on the uh, cruise liners, played in a jazz band that went across the pond and uh, wrote a nice little memoir about his experiences doing that, you know, about playing and, you know, working every night. You got to do several shows a night and you're not allowed to mingle with the passengers and just kind of crazy stuff like that. But uh, he was a jazz drummer and an incredible, incredible jazz drummer. And... We'd sit down, and he was the one that really got me into music and being an eclectic listener, if you will. You know, I didn't really focus on just one type of music. You know, he sat me down and listened to Grover Washington and Horace Silver and Miles Davis, you know, and that's when I started slapping and popping and, you know, doing, doing all the things that us crazy bass players like to do. And this was back you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, and I'm like, hey, have you guys heard Duran Duran? Man, that bass player's bad. You know, it's like, what? You know. Uh, I was listening to Stanley Clark and Jocko Pastorius. Not much room for that technique. 
in rock and roll unless you're Flea, which he's a phenomenal bassist. I love that fender he has. All right, mice against the grain, very efficient. Clean up a few spots here because I got got a few little places, and this PAA is so good that my face is it's still gliding all over my face. You know, I could just shave like this if I needed to. That's how good this soap is. Oh, baby. Love it. I am ready for work. Nice warm water rinse. Get the soap off with my cheapy towel. Cold water rinse, close the pores. Woo! That's cold. And for that, I'm breaking out the Lancaster. Love it. Dr. Matt, I promise I'm trying to look at the camera, but I keep looking at myself. I'm like, I'm getting there. All right, all right, as Matthew McConaughey says here in Austin, Texas. We're going to start off. Got to get me a little bit of Thayer's. I've been trying to keep these under 10 minutes, and, and it's just, I, I talk too much. <laughs> I need to quit talking so much. I love the Thayer's. It's a great facial toner. I use the unscented because I like the scent of the soap and the splash to stand out. Now today, I am going to do the balm first and then the splash. Is it wrong? I don't know. Comment below. Let me know what you think. But this stuff just is a great scent. I love sandalwood. One of my faves. Oh man, that is putting a really nice, nice sheen on my face. Oh, baby. And then, of course, the splash, as always, shake it up. Shake it up. This has a really nice dark look to it as well. I love it. Burn, baby, burn. Just go inferno. Oh, boy. Oh, that's awesome. Get my neck a little bit. I just shaved my neck the other day. Ah, that is good stuff. Well, folks, thanks for joining me this morning on Dougie Shaving. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on anything. If I'm doing something right, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Hope you're well, and I wish you the best of health. Bye for now.